Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is a man who needs no introduction, Bill Nye, the science guy and CEO of the Planetary Society. Bill, thank you so much for joining me. Good to see you, Brittany. It is good to see you as well. And if I could ask, could you provide us with a science lesson to kick off the conversation? The U.S., along with Mexico and Canada, is gearing up for a total solar eclipse on April 8th. So can you talk to us about the science behind one of these events? So it's, it is, these happen regularly, but they seldom happen in such a conveniently populated area. So here's the deal. Uh, as you may have noticed, uh, that we have a moon here on Earth, and we also orbit a star, the sun, and we have this remarkable uh, astronomical feature here on Earth where the moon blocks out almost exactly the same width of sky as our sun. And so this doesn't happen on most planets that we can tell, Mars, for example. And there's a great, oh, there's a great word. The moon subtends the same angle of sky as the sun does at certain times. So in October, the moon blocked the sun, but not completely, because the moon's orbit's a little bit out of round, a little bit eccentric, uh, elliptical. And so this time, April 8th, 2024, the moon is gonna block the sun out completely for a large swath of, over a large swath of North America. And this is the mythic thing called the total eclipse. And if you've never seen a total eclipse, solar eclipse, everybody, I really encourage you to take the time, effort, energy, whatever it is to get in the path. It really is a remarkable, remarkable thing. And that path that you wanna be in is the path of totality. So what can people expect to see if they're in that area? So the, for about an hour, you, well, first of all, <clears throat> uh, several hours or a few hours before uh, it goes totally dark, the moon starts to cover up the sun. And it reminds me of a cloudy day. It gets uh, like the world gets a little darker for a while. But then, uh, not suddenly, but very quickly, the moon blocks the sun completely and it turns to nighttime. Uh, insects start chirping or the crickets start cricketing, the birds start singing, and it gets quite cool. And because of the difference in temperature from where it is daylight, a few kilometers or miles away, and where you are, where it's totally dark, there's a wind. <clears throat> a wind happens, the, the uh, cool air squeezes the warm air up outside of the path of totality and get a little breeze, like, whoa. And then, uh, uh, and then, as it comes on, you can see these crazy patterns in the ground. If you do this with your fingers, you can see the crescent. But the big deal is you want to have glasses that enable you to look right at the sun. And because as it starts to get dark, you just want to stare at it. And uh, uh, it's human nature. You know, the, the, there's a myth <clears throat> as to why pirates wear an eye patch. And uh, this is not documented, but it's reasonable that in order to navigate on the trackless ocean, they would wait for this moment where the sun is highest in the sky, where the sun culminates, as they say. And so they would just stare at it and stare at it and stare at it, and that damaged their eye. That's a myth. So uh, get eclipse glasses. I should have some right here, don't I? What am I doing? Yes. Get your official, oh, oh, oh official eclipse glasses and this will now enable you to stare right at the sun and we recommend of course going to the planetary society website to uh, get yourself a pack of them and if you want to be a hit among strangers get in the path of totality you're like in some exotic location like fredericksburg texas or cleveland ohio montreal quebec and uh, hand out eclipse glasses to people so that you can all share this experience. It really is amazing. These glasses, although they're made of this particular pair, is made of cardboard with this mylar, these mylar inserts, they absolutely are perfectly safe. They are, they enable you to look straight, straight, straight at the sun. 
So viewers, you heard it here first. Get your glasses from Bill Nye to make sure that you can view the eclipse like so. Everyone, look at that now. I am curious though, Bill, because you, uh, the Planetary Society noted that only 0.5% of the world's population live in the path of totality. Aside from Fredericksburg, Texas, what are some of <laughs> those other cities or towns in that area? So if you go to our map at planetary.org, You'll, we have a com, uh, we have uh, a partnership with the Eclipse Company, and so you can see the path going from uh, southeast on the map. Uh, south, by southeast, of course, I mean southwest. Southwest on the map toward the northeast, and it goes through about the where you say 0.5 percent of the world's population. About 40 million people live in the path. Now, understand, eclipses happen every year and a half somewhere on Earth. A total eclipse happens, but the deal is they're usually in the middle of the ocean. You know, most of the Earth is covered with water, and so most total eclipses happen where nobody lives. And yes, eclipse chasing, chasing hardcore people do get on ships and go out to the middle of the ocean to get under the path. But this is going right over Mexico, Canada, U.S. As we like to say, don't miss it if you can. That's don't kind of a joke. <laughs> Don't miss it if you can. Make sure to wear your glasses. Get in the path of totality. What other viewing tips for the total eclipse does Bill Nye have for us? Uh, don't don't spend very much time trying to use your camera, your phone, to take pictures. Just take the time to be in it. That's my advice. You get caught up messing with your camera and you don't quite realize what happens, uh, what's happening. Just as I like to say, be in the moment. And uh, last one I saw was in 2017, and I saw something I've never seen before, where you look way, way over to one side of the path, and you can see that there's sunlight way, way the heck out there. It's not like a sunset, it's a different thing. And I mention this because during this eclipse, there'll be something I've never seen before. And I don't know what it's going to be. There'll be some feature of the eclipse that I've never seen before. And if you're of a mind, you can make the so-called pinhole viewer. If you get a pinhole in a shoebox and project it from the pinhole onto the other end of the shoebox, you'll be able to look at that and see the disk of the moon going over the disk of the sun. But it's not all that compared to wearing the glasses and really being in it. So pictures don't do it justice. We know that. What else? Well, do picture somebody. NASA will be taking pictures. Z one zillion people will be taking pictures. So they'll view the pictures automated. after. After the five minutes, yeah. then view the pictures. Yeah, there'll be automated systems, telescopes, tracking the moon, taking beautiful pictures. You ask me for advice. My advice is be in the moment. I love that advice. The Planetary Society also noted that you could view other cosmic phenomena during the eclipse. What would that be? What does that look like? Uh, you'll see, if you know where to look, you'll see both Jupiter and, and, and Mars. They'll both be uh, pretty bright because it turns to night, you guys. You see stars in, at 1.30 in the afternoon Central Time. Like, what's going on? Dude, 2.30 Eastern Time. Like, whoa. It's really uh, amazing. And we know that the path of totality is the best seat in the house, but let's say you're not on that path. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get off work to be there. I'll be in New York. What do you what mean? You're a big time journalist. You tell them this is a big doggone once in a lifetime event. The next one's in 2044. If my boss is listening, to... Bill Nye told me to take off of work yeah. to, to be well, in Fredericksburg, whole... Texas. The whole... Well, Fredericksburg would be ideal, but you're in New York City or some exotic place, right? New well, York just City, drive yes. north, yeah, drive north to Buffalo or Montreal or someplace and watch the thing, Toronto. Um, so if you're not in totality, uh, the partial eclipse will go over a tremendous area of North America. But it's, I got to say, from experience, that's kind of like a cloudy day. I mean, it's worth experiencing and it's worth looking over, over at it. Uh, with the glasses, but it's not quite the same as getting into the total. It's not, it's not anything the same. 
You're actually hosting an event. We alluded to it earlier, the Eclipso Rama in Fredericksburg, Texas. Can you talk a little bit about the event? So the idea of doing it in Texas, you guys, is the weather. You know, in the springtime in uh, New England, nor uh, the Northeast U.S. and Canada, uh, it might be cloudy. You know, Cleveland is notorious for a dear friend of mine who lives in Cleveland. And, you know, it's, eh. and I've seen an eclipse on a cloudy day. It's cool, literally cool. It gets cold. But it's not the same as really seeing the disk go over the disk, the moon in between us and the sun. And so uh, that's why we're doing it in Texas. And it's in, uh, you can get to it from Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio. And so it's, it's centrally located. The planetary site is doing this at a venue where they have weddings and stuff. It's a big ranch. So there's lots of room and there's camping. There are these cottages. There's glamping if you're into that modern coinage. And so we encourage everybody to come on down. And I'm sure all of your listeners are members of the Planetary Society, the world's largest space interest organization advancing space science and exploration so that citizens of Earth will know the cosmos and our place within it. So it was started by Carl Sagan, famous astronomer. I took one class from him. I was asked to be on the board of directors. Directors. I was at a meeting of the board where we gave Stephen Hawking an award. I was on one side of this British pub and everybody else was on the other side. They took a vote and now I am accidentally the CEO of the world's largest independent space interest organization. Check us out at planetary.org. Back to you, Brittany. <laughs> Everyone check it out. But before I let you go, you are the expert, undoubtedly. What else do we need to know? Because something that struck my attention is that you said you could be viewing something in this eclipse for the first time you haven't seen. And you, you're Bill Nye the science guy. So what do we need to oh, know here? So something I must have seen, but didn't really absorb last time I was in, we were in Nebraska where there's a, a national park that was right in the path. It was really good. That was two thing, uh, something that I must have happened that I didn't see. So just in your mind's head, one disc is going in front of the other. The moon's in front of the sun, the earth is spinning, the moon is moving, the sun is in the middle of everything. There are pictures very well, very all over the internet from NASA where you see, instead of seeing one edge of the sun, you see two, it looks like two distinct sunbeams. And that's because of craters and mountains on the moon. In other words, there's a moment during this total eclipse where sunlight was going through a valley on the moon. I mean, how cool is that? And I must have seen it, but I was just, whoa, it's an eclipse. I didn't quite absorb it. So I'm going to be watching for that this time. Uh, imagine that, you guys, where the, the valleys on the moon the mountains on the moon are so big. How big are they? They're so big that you can see them from the Earth during a total eclipse, if you're wearing the proper glasses. So, um, so I'm looking forward to that. And there'll be something else I didn't anticipate. Looking forward to that, too. Well, we are looking forward to viewing the total eclipse, hearing, your, uh, hearing how it went for you, hearing your experience. Bill Nye, thank you so much for the insight as we look forward to this event. We'll see you, uh, let's experience totality together. Carry on. <laughs>